Hey family, what's good? This is your girl and the bronze goddess and it's time for another strawberry letter. Let's go get them. Uh, I recently moved to a new city and uh, my first and second week here I met a guy. I was immediately attracted to him and I just wanted to get to know him. I wasn't necessarily looking for a relationship but I wasn't necessarily not looking for one either. Uh, the next time I saw him I talked to him and we exchanged numbers. We texted back and forth for weeks and we even hung out. Uh, while, he, while we were texting before we hung out he let it be known that he wanted to be married young and he wants to be in a relationship. I'm 23 and he's 21. Uh, I just moved here so I'm unemployed currently and I live with my sister and he's unemployed working at a fast food restaurant and lives with his mom and goes to school. I've graduated college already. Neither of us have a car so we have to use public transportation and I sometimes use my sister's car when I can. Um, the first time we hung out we had great chemistry and we were very intimate but we didn't have sex. Uh, also, I had been experiencing extreme anxiety and panic attacks around men, and I didn't experience any of that around him. We talked until the sun rose, we cuddled, we kissed, etc. Uh, he spent the night on the couch, and in the morning he told me that we were in a relationship now. I agreed. And then a few days later he told me that he wants to marry me. Days later. Mm, and I've only known, we only known each other for a few months, and have only been in a relationship for a few weeks. Uh, but it feels like longer. We are close and we have the same goals. Uh, I love him, but logic says that he has a baby. He works at a fast food place and until he graduates from school, any job that I make will make more than him. Um, he, oh, we want to get married soon and move in together. We have both wanted to be in a relationship and we said that the next person we have sex with will be the last. And we both feel like no matter what, we can make it work. Right now, things are a little bit hard in our relationship just because we don't have a car, we don't have very money, very much money, and we live on different sides of town. Um, but he makes sure that he takes the train and two buses just to see me. He makes me feel so appreciated just for being me. And I feel like I've never been loved the way that he loves me. And I've never felt so comfortable and confident around a man. Uh, he doesn't get paid much, but... Uh, when I needed money to pay for my phone bill, he paid it. He also does great with his nephews. They love him. Um, he's very positive around his neighborhood. We both have big dreams and we're working on them, but uh, I'm going to have to summarize this one. Basically, uh, they both have big dreams, but she doesn't know um, if she is settling for him. Uh, her idea of the perfect man was this. Let me give you her description because I thought it was interesting. Rasta nation of the gods and earth nation of Islam conscious type uh, lots of money car his own place no kids so she said that she thinks that that might be unrealistic for her in her particular age group the, the writer is not Christian but she does appreciate my advice thank you for that I really appreciate the fact that you said that you don't have to be a Christian and enjoy my advice uh, but anyway let's go ahead and get to it because she wants to basically know is she settling uh, you were 23 years old and he's 21 what, may, what bothers me the most about this situation, not so much the age, but the time frame. You know, almost immediately after meeting him, he told you that he wanted to get married young. And you both are kind of rushing everything because he wants to get married young. And then you're like, you know what, I think I want to marry him. I'm always leery of putting a time frame on it. And don't get me wrong, I'm a woman too, okay? I know what I felt like approaching the age of 25 and feeling like, you know what, I wanna have all this settled. I'm gonna have my first kid at 26, second kid at 27, third kid, if possible, maybe 29, something like that. I wanna be done with having kids at 30. You know, you make all these plans. Like I always quote this quote that I love, we make plans and God laughs. You can't necessarily plan everything. You can't time everything, and especially when it comes to love. My biggest hesitation with this particular situation is you both are kind of, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna explain it like this. One of the reasons why I don't like horse, I'm a Christian, that's not really my thing, but the main reason is because when you've already got an idea in your mind for what's supposed to happen and what's supposed to be, then you kind of, you make that thing happen. You kind of try to shift things. You. I feel like in some way you make them happen the way that it was written, more so than letting things happen organically. If you really want to know if horoscopes work, uh, really actually work, live your life first and then go back and read them and then see if they're accurate. But when the idea of me reading about tomorrow, today, and then, oh my God, I can't believe it really happened, I feel like sometimes you kind of make those things happen. But anyway, uh, I feel like that's what's happening here. That's why I wanted to bring up that analogy. I feel like you both want to be married, you know, and you know, here you guys are getting along. I like her, she likes me, we have great chemistry. Well, well, automatically, what is the rush? 
If it's meant to be, my dad told me this one time, if it's meant to be and you're going to be with somebody for the rest of your life, why not take some time to get to know them? Don't get me wrong. Of course, I always say that he will rush to take you off the, mar off the market, but you guys don't even have your stuff together. Like he lives with his mom. You live with your sister. You guys can barely even see each other. Why can't you establish a little something first? Like where are you you're going to get married and live where? Like this, we can still take enough time to make sure that you have your stuff together so you're not a burden and your new marriage isn't a burden on someone else. Can he even take care of you? Like, what is he going to do? He can't take you out of your sister's home to bring you into his mother's. I'm not trying to be funny by that. I'm being honest. So what does he have to offer you besides great chemistry and great conversation? And again, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just being real. I'm talking to you like a friend would talk to you. I'm talking to you like you're one of my girlfriends. What does he have to offer you? So he's work. I understand that he's working on his education. I don't know how far along he is with that. I know he's working at fast food right now. He also, here's another thing. You said if he, uh, no matter what, because he's still um, in school right now and hasn't finished his degree, you know, you're going to make more money than him. And then at the very end of the letter, then you throw in the fact that he has a baby. So where is the baby's mother? Did he also give her the same promises that he's giving you? I mean, what's up with that? He's 21. When did he have this baby? A couple months ago, a couple years ago? What's going on with that situation? Did he give her the same, you know, little spiel that he's giving you? Did he, did he tell her that he wanted to get married young? And that's why she had his baby? Like, what all do you really know? Take the time to get to know him. Make sure before you, before you just leap and, and not even know if there is a net there to catch you, can we not look around and, and look for clues and just make sure this is working out? Don't get me wrong. I, I love this quote. It says, follow your heart, but take your brain with you. How much is the child support payment going to be? Like, and, you know, he lives with his mom. How, does, how do you know that marrying you won't be his es escape, the great escape? That this is one of his ways of getting out of his mother's house, that you'll, you'll be able to help him with the bills because you make more money than him because you are educated. In this day and age, you have to be a little more cautious. You have to be a little more careful. And I'm just being honest and being blunt. Some of these men come out here with the intention of using you. And you have, you sound like you have a lot to, to, to show for yourself. And you've accomplished quite a bit. Don't let anybody just, you know, ride your coattails. And I'm not saying that's what he's doing. Just make sure that's not what he's doing. Because even though you're living with your sister now, and even though you don't have a car right now, you have potential. And potential is amazing. You know, once you get yourself the right job with your education, then you then the money will come. You've already gotten the hard part done. You've already gotten the education. All you need is a job. When you get the right job and you actually once you need once you get your foot in the right career path, then everything is going to open up. Doors are going to begin to open up for you. Make sure that he's on the same level with all of that. No, he doesn't have to make as much money as you, but what does he have to bring to the table? I understand, I feel like with these letters that I'm getting a lot lately, I, I'm dealing with a lot of women who are just like, you know, it's good enough. At least he wants me. There should be more of a requirement to being with you, but at least he wants me. Like, what else? Like, I mean, love is not going to keep you warm in these cold months. Like, what's going to turn that heat on? What's going to, like, make sure that he has something to offer you besides great conversation. There's nothing wrong with love. Love is very romantic. It is beautiful. But it honestly, it doesn't pay the bills. It's not... Some of you get mad at me for saying this, but I gotta keep it real. It's not everything. There still has to be a little more there. Because what you're gonna, what you're marrying into is not just a guy that treats you right. He also has no money. He has no place to stay. He has no car. And he has a child that he has to take care of. Those are not all bad things, but that's a lot to take on. And especially when you are, when he's rushing to, you know, to marry you and you're talking about marriage only a few days and weeks and hours after meeting each other, it's just way too soon to me. What exactly is his intention? Can you slow down long enough to figure out exactly what his intentions are towards you? See what he wants. Make sure you know what do you want. What is your plan? Like, there's nothing wrong with asking those type of questions. If he, if he man enough to ask you to marry him, he should be man enough to answer some of these basic questions. What are your intentions towards me? Where do you see yourself in five years? What steps are you taking to make that happen? I'm not moving in with you and your mother. You're not moving in with me. So where are we going to stay? I need, I need solidified 
tangible plans. Because I feel like you guys are on a cloud. And don't get me wrong, when, you're, when you fall in love, love is blind and you don't see all these things. But you have to be, you have to follow common sense as well. Like I said, follow your heart but take your brain with you, logically. The, the relationship has to make sense. It has to make sense. As well as being romantic and all those other things. How is he going to provide anything for you? And I know that you're a big girl and you got your big girl pants on. And you can take care of yourself. But what do you need him for? What do you need him for? Just make sure that he's not trying to take advantage of you. That he didn't see you as his golden ticket. Okay? He's not on his um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory type steez. Okay? Make sure that's not what it's all about. And see what is really good. See what's good. Um, make sure he can give you some tangible plans. There's nothing wrong with that. You asked to marry me. Well, what are we going to do after we do that? Who's paying for this marriage? Like, there's so many things out there. I feel like you're just like, oh my God, he wants to marry me. And you're not considering anything else. What else? Are you going to buy your own ring? Like, what, what do we have here besides romance? And some of you are going to be like, girl, I don't get in the... Some of you are not going to agree with me, and that's fine. That's why I always leave the comment section open for you guys to leave comments. You know, the whole point behind these strawberry letters is to give the writer advice that they can actually use. Whether they take my advice, or whether they take yours, it doesn't matter to me as long as they are helped by, with their situation. That's the whole point. But because to me, it's going to take more than romance. A little bit more. What else you got? Anyway, uh, I love you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to thumbs up if you did and I will see you guys in the next one. Until next time.